Hi, and welcome to our class two, module two. I uh, just wanted to start off with a review of where we left off at the end of class and essentially talk about where we have a shortage of competent professional managers in every type of organization at every management level in industry in the U.S. So if we think about that, what we need, and assuming this is one of the reasons you're taking this class, are managers who are more trained and competent. If we look at 10% of the American labor force as managers, what do they do? What functions do they serve? The real world of management is not ideal for many people. They have to accept responsibility, deal with problems, make decisions, and work through people to achieve end results effectively. Real quickly, thinking about this and how it resonates to you, uh, we want to think about examples of managers you have encountered who might not have done or had the background or qualifications necessary. So if we think about management and in that context, you can see in our slide here, management is the accomplishment of predetermined goals and objectives through the efforts of others in the most efficient possible way. Our field is called sports management, sports administration, and we manage programs, people, resources, facilities, and what it is um, that we have that separates us from the good or the bad, the average from most excellent, is essentially that the management or the leadership of these programs and the circumstances that they have uh, are combined in a way that makes them the most effective. So if we look at this, we look at where the tensions that define an athletic director and the job of an AD, whether they are a leader or whether they're a manager. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about this. Now, if I go through an overview of management or the basic functions of management, it can be defined as accomplishing a goal through the efforts of people in the most effective and possible way. And if I look at William Gear's definition of sport management, please note the word successful sport management and the reoccurring theme that objectives or goals need to be either predetermined or clearly established and how they relate to uh, our sport or sport related organizations. Success requires specific skills in the work environment, whether individual or in groups. Think of management as working through others, even if you realize that maybe you could perform the tasks better than others personally or trying how to figure to delegate and spread around those tasks so that you're investing in your organization to get others involved and for giving them the opportunity to take ownership and responsibility. Break this down, we have the functions of management. All of the readings touch on the fact that management is a basic process and all agree on the number of components. So starting with the first one, planning, essentially we're setting goals and developing a method. Poor planning is the reason why organizations fail to achieve the desired end result. Planning is futuristic. Looks ahead, sets goals, objectives, activity deals with the future. Excuses not to plan, maybe reasons why people take the, the different route. Planning limits freedom. Putting out fires takes precedent and there isn't time to plan. So instead of going immediately to the question of how when planning, answer these questions. Who, what, and when. The how is our immediate goals. So then we look into organize. Working toward a goal. We create a structure or an organizational setup that makes sense for the environment in which you work. Job descriptions, you organize the efforts of the employees to reach objectives successfully. So here's where we look to decide. Be willing to face problems, make decisions. And then we look to communicate. It's the motivational force that produces action on the 
part of somebody else. And so the next, that will lead us into the activate and implement phase. Uh, putting them in the action plan, this gives us accountability to others. The work directly with the employees to achieve the objectives. And then the fourth one to control, this measure performance and assessment. So if we're looking at assessment, all control programs have these three essential steps. We can establish a standard plan. We can appraise conformance to the standard through either inspections, uh, and then take corrective action when the standard is exceeded or if we're not being met. And then the final portion would be evaluate by reflecting and periodically reviewing the practices to see if your results are justified. Now that we're into the basic features of management, think of how this responsibility to the success, success or failure of the venture. To think of the end results and how they determine the value to the organization. Three, think of the need to try to understand the basic needs of those who work for you. Four, think of being, or think of there being three groups of people in the world. One, those who make things happen. Two, those who watch things happen. And then three, the overwhelming majority who have no idea what's happening. And with our managers, they have to be that first group. They make things happen. If you're not, then your organization will not progress. And then the fifth element, if we look at management, is to think of how management gradually separates you from other organizations. Think of your experiences with banks, supermarkets, etc. One of the biggest weaknesses of managers is that they think nobody else can do the job as well as they can, so they don't delegate. All right, now this next session, we're going to talk about the characteristics of the manager, and I want you to refer to the discussion module in module two and have this open up for discussions so that this will be a part of an assignment that we all will work towards discussing and talking about what characteristics do you think are essential for a manager in today's workplace. Also, I'd like you to answer why, and then are the characteristics different in an athletic setting? So as you finish with the discussion, I'd like to go into the next portion where we talk about management styles in the 21st century. It used to be that command and control style of management was common practice. Employees were told what to do, when to do it, and even how often it should be done. No surprise that this approach created a, a workplace that was pretty unsatisfying. Companies around the world are reorganizing and eliminating middle management and becoming flatter. Uh, the control is essentially shifted from controlling people to controlling data. And good examples of this would be if we look at Microsoft, whose inclination is to remake itself while still being successful. And as I move on through the slide, you know, we look at the command and control approaches being phased out from more cooperative and engaging style, the coach approach, or being a manager slash coach. And we want to talk about the manager or the role of a manager coach and how it can be described with these behaviors. Looking at achieving results and excellence through others rather than personally taking care of things. And then two, we're looking at focusing on developing employees in order to achieve business results rather than micromanaging their every move. All of these creates an environment where people want to work with you and feel valued and respected. And so now what we want to look at is where we see these. Uh, and I'm going to talk briefly through, so I really like when you have the opportunity to look through these PowerPoints and really delve into the, the information that's there because I'd prefer not to read a PowerPoint. I'd rather you get that information, um, but to just touch base and, and get the, the main points. Uh, so if I talk about the first one, the speed of trust, uh, we can see this in the model where the four cores of credibility uh, relate to our job force. And then the other area where we see this model is in the research project done at Pepperdine School of Business and Management on the six most critical skills for effective managers. And then lastly, we see a model of leadership effectiveness 
and where that comes into place uh, through the consulting group in a study that was done in 1998. And here you can see the effects uh, that a manager has and what that comes to play as far as the leadership effectiveness. So if we look at the Hagberg Consulting Group study, essentially what we can see are that corporations and the, what they identified as far as behaviors that reduced effectiveness of company presidents. Behaviors that reduced effectiveness of the leaders. So demonstrating one or more of these characteristics undermine the influence on others uh, in your credibility and effectiveness. So our, our second discussion module, I'd like you to talk about uh, the characteristics of leadership and what distinctions can be made between a manager and a leader. What are the characteristics you feel are necessary to be a good leader and why? And then if we talk about this uh, and think about it, an athletic administrator or an athletic director, you'll need to be both a leader and a manager. And we can see this in a quote from Elizabeth Alden and taking time out. Essentially, the management side of directing an athletic program is like observing one's responsibilities through a microscope, while the leadership side is more like looking through a wide angle lens. So we can see this being reinforced in the traits of a perfect leader. And you can see these in this slide and the next. And also being reinforced in the leadership for sports organizations. As well as the four styles of leadership. And lastly, our situational leadership. And please take time to read through these so that you get the most out of this information. Know we can see how leadership and management are so crucial as we bring these together, directing, coaching, and supporting, as well as delegating others. That's all I have for this week. Please look through the PowerPoint at your own pace in case you want more time to read through and have a better understanding as you work through your discussion assignments.